In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Have a seat, if you would. So today we begin the first, well, it is the first Sunday of Advent, so we begin the season of Advent as a congregation, as a community, and as a church, and a member of, of uh, a church in association with lots of churches that uh, are liturgical in nature and celebrate this, this thing that we call Advent. And so it's the four weeks or so before Christmas, and it is a season in which we are called to quieting and to waiting and to listening, even as the world calls us to all kinds of frenetic activity, causing, I don't know about you, but people like me to feel a little bit schizoidal in nature. Um, even when your diocese has all its Christmas, uh, Christmas parties, and when I first came here, we, we, the first thing we do was scheduled all the make sure we got all the parties on the schedule on Saturdays and Sundays that the, that the church has. And that's fine. But the point is uh, that this is a time for us as Christians uh, and as folks here at, at uh, Good Shepherd to quiet ourselves and to listen and to put ourselves in the, in the presence of God, perhaps in a, a special way. So here in the first reading, Isaiah chapter 2. So we know it's Isaiah early on, very early on before the fall of Jerusalem, kind of winding through, if you read uh, first Isaiah, all these passages of one being uh, warning the people that you better shape up, because if you don't shape up, you know, justice will come and you will, you will experience Jerusalem falling, which we know is exactly what happened, because they, in fact, did not shape up but if those, those warnings are intermingled with these oracles like we heard this morning where uh, Isaiah is saying, but know this, that even if you don't shape up, I'm paraphrasing big time, if you don't shape up, you know, that I will never leave you. I will, I will always love you. I will always be there for you. And you are called to live in the promise of the salvation that will come, right? And so Isaiah is looking for at once the coming of the Messiah as well as the coming of the, of the rebuilding of the temple down the pike, right? And those are the kinds of things that he's, he's trying to capture uh, emotion around as he speaks to us this morning. And in the gospel, uh, kind of the same thing we experience uh, Jesus telling the people that you need to live in a spirit of readiness because nobody knows when that second coming will happen. No one knows when, when the return will be and when judgment will come and people will be plucked one while the other one is left behind or however that's going to happen, you know. That's, of course, in the hands of God. Um, if you're Baptist, you kind of have a clearer vision of that than maybe we Episcopalians do. But, um, you know, but that's what the warning is, that some sense be ready, live in readiness. And then later on we hear Paul in Romans uh, today saying very much the same thing, even as, as he points you know, to the second coming, to that coming where uh, Jesus will come in his glory uh, and people will be judged, and the good will uh, be taken, and, the, and the, the bad, as it were, the sinners will be left behind. All of the judgment is, is fine, and it's all in the future, but what we have to live in is the now, right? And so the question is begged in all of those readings, from the prophet Isaiah to the prophet's prophet Jesus to Paul's prophetic side, you know, looking toward the future, but the point is, so what? Because all we have is the now. The future essentially is in God's hands. And I think it's that now that Advent is about. It's our church, a liturgical church, sort of punctuating the year with a season, it's relatively short, but a season of 
preparation, a season of a sort of a season where the church calls us to step back and to to ready ourselves for what is to come, but also to learn how to live in the now, in the today of our lives. It's all we have. Though some of us who are older, like me, you know, you can do this thing about reminiscing about, uh, about the, 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 the past, about, you know, the good old days and those kinds of things. And this is the way it was when I was 12 and whatever or romanticize the future for young folks. Wow, it's going to be this way, you know, in 10 years or 20 years or 50 years down the pike. And, and we can have those kinds of temptations to be pulled away from what it is that we really have. And in fact, all, that is, all it is that we really have, and that is the now in which we can make decisions and change our lives. That being said, uh, I was reading uh, some stuff around Advent, and I came across a wonderful little reading from a guy named St. Uh, Bernard of Clairvaux. And uh, Bernard was uh, a Benedictine. He lived about 1100 or a little later than 1100. <clears throat> so, um, you know, it's been a while. Uh, he was very uh, instrumental in... Um, kind of entering the, the Benedictine order and, and uh, getting them to look at themselves because they had, they had fallen into um, practices that, that where they had lost their focus. And out of his movement came the Cistercians and the monks that like maybe you might read about, like Livet Gethsemane and those kinds of folks, a more strict interpretation of the Benedictine rule. And so uh, I want to read from Bernard a uh, real quick little thing. So he says this. We have come to understand a threefold coming of the Lord. This is what I liked. The third coming lies between the other two. Two comings, two of the comings are clearly visible, but the third is not. In the first coming, the Lord was seen on earth, dwelling among us. And as he himself testified, they saw him and they hated him. In the final coming, all flesh shall see the salvation of God, and they will look on him whom they pierced. Then Bernard says, the intermediate coming is hidden, in which only his chosen recognize his presence within themselves, and their souls are saved. In his first coming, our Lord came in our flesh and in our weakness. In the intermediate coming, he comes in spirit, and in power, and in his final coming, he will be seen in glory and in majesty. This intermediate coming is like a road on which we travel from his first coming to his last. In the first, Christ was our redemption. In the last, he will appear as our life. And in his intermediate coming, Christ is our comfort and our rest. And so during this season of Advent, we celebrate that intermediate coming in which we who are chosen and have been chosen and have gone under the water of, of baptism are called to a very powerful and distinct relationship with Jesus as our brother, as the only one who actually can give us that rest of which Bernard talks, right? And so Advent is that time that the church gives us each year 
to sort of punctuate that year with a time of focusing on our present experience of Jesus in our lives, of being present to that presence, which is nothing more or nothing less than allowing ourselves to be loved and to be forgiven and to be readied to know Jesus at a deeper, perhaps a more profound space. And that's, I think, the core of what Advent is about. And all of our readings during this season will be about that, like the candles. We light one at a time, sort of slowly are making our way down that, that trail that, that, Bernard, uh, that Bernard defines in, in the reading, that, that path where the chosen can walk and be present to each and every step or each and every candle, as it were. That being said, I think in some ways uh, uh, the, the spirituality of Advent is rather simple. It's slowing down and quieting ourselves and especially challenged to do that uh, because the world around us sort of uh, tantalizes us into all kinds of other activities and endeavors. Here at Good Shepherd, we have designed some opportunities for folks to maybe spend some time focusing. Uh, so every Sunday we'll gather, and that will be our sort of our theme, the Advent theme of quieting and focusing. Saturday this Saturday, uh, we will have a, a day of reflection focusing on Advent themes from 10 till 2. There's a sign-up sheet in the narthex or the lobby. Uh, we need you to sign up just because we're going to provide lunch and we need a number. There will be child care if anyone signs up that needs child care. We obviously aren't going to provide it if there aren't any childs. So uh, sign up and, and let us know. And if you forget to sign up today, you can, you can call in the office. Uh, so the day of reflection, we're going to have a special Young People's Eucharist on the third Sunday of Advent here in the church at 1015, where the young folks will be more involved and, and uh, uh, do the ministries of the altar and the table with us. We're going to have a celebration of Blue Christmas. All these things are defined and scheduled in a little handout that I hope you will take home with you. It's kind of refrigerator magnet material, uh, if you want to look at it. We'll have a special Lessons and Carols service the fourth Sunday of Advent, uh, where we gather and the choir will have uh, a special celebration around the table with a uh, uh, a way to kind of gather and, and bring Advent to an end. And then after the lessons and carols, we're going to have a chaotic experience of decorating the church because everybody's invited to bring their kids and their families and uh, maybe a potluck we don't know yet and ladders and those kinds of things. And Bill Gillespie is frowning right now, but He'll get over it, uh, and we're going to decorate the church together to bring in then our celebrations of Christmas. So during the Advent season, hopefully uh, we can pray together some and gather our spirits, and when you're out there in the frenetic world, uh, come to church and invite your friends to, to gather with us and celebrate a season more of quiet and peace and restfulness uh, in the church. I'd also invite you to uh, take, there it is, thanks, Chris. Uh, these books, we still have a few left um, uh, to get them into circulation because they, the readings start today. So there's some out in that box. Take one for yourself. There's a short meditation every day uh, to help you maybe do a little bit of reflection. Uh, take these with you, and hopefully the box will be empty today and we'll get them into circulation. Give them to your friends. Put them at the donut store. I don't care what you do with them, but if they're in the box, they're not doing anybody any good. 
So that's kind of what we're about, trying to capture the spirit of the readings that we had today and will continue to have during the week, around our table especially here on Sunday, to gather in, in a spirit of prayerfulness, of restfulness, of being uh, somehow available uh, on that path that we take together that Bernard describes, um, and that uh, being able to uh, come to Christmas perhaps in a in a way to experience uh, Jesus in a more profound uh, and in a closer and tighter and more loving way uh, in this uh, 2019 celebration time. <laughs>